Servus from Vienna, Austria. In this show I have these topics for you. What did Microsoft do for Access in the last month? One new feature, website changes, several update bugs and mysterious fixes. Access community, presentations, videos, websites, past and upcoming events. And finally, an interview with Philipp Stiefel about his new VBA video course and his latest tool. Let's start with Microsoft. There are a few things going on there around Access, positive and negative. There are three areas that I will talk about briefly. A new feature, the Dataverse Connector, changes in communication by Microsoft, mainly affecting the Access Roadmap, and the inevitable topic of update bugs. In May, one new feature for Access was finally released, the Dataverse Connector, for which the Access team had postponed all other changes. I reported and wrote about it several times and it was a topic at our Access conferences. So far, not much has been seen publicly of its practical use, very few questions in forums, etc. So it's hard to tell if anyone is using the connector and who. The next few months may bring more clarity there. The Access Roadmap has been a grateful topic for Access News so far. I invented the delay column for it. Microsoft has now spoiled this fun for us. Not that the delays have stopped, no, they simply cut down the roadmap. Currently, it only contains one single item, the fix for the old monster bug. This topic is quite controversial. The statements on the web range from still not even reliably reproducible for the Access team to already fixed by newer Windows versions. The matter remains thrilling. Regarding the roadmap change, there is a blog post from Access Program Manager Michael Aldrich. They now only list those features in the roadmap for which there is 90% confidence that they can actually be released by the specified date. This blog post is to be updated for new features. We will see how this backup roadmap really evolves. The feelings of the Access users about this are best expressed by the wise words we learned from the great American philosopher Doris Day. There is also a long-hoped improvement in the Access team's communication. Michael Aldrich has for the first time published a list of bugs fixed in the previous month on the Access team blog. They fix many more bugs in secret than customers realize. Michael has committed to blogging this list monthly. Beyond the valuable information, this shows the public that Microsoft is actively maintaining Access, something the product has always desperately needed. For that, and for the first time, here's some unequivocal praise for the Access team on our show. That's it for the good news, because in the last few months there were and are again quite a few bugs caused by updates. Here is a list of the most noticeable. The last and most recent one, which again brings entire applications in all Access versions to a halt, was caused by security updates. This is the worst variant, because Microsoft is extremely clumsy and slow in reacting to bugs caused by security updates. The other update bugs were for the most part fixed very quickly, with no update or no new version, and almost no communication from the vendor. The fixes happened through change or feature gates. The text from Microsoft about it describes that when they ship changes, they wrap them in something called change gate or feature gate. Office apps phone home and request the status of these gates to determine if the code should execute or not. So in case of a regression, Microsoft flips a switch and disables the causing code. No one outside the company knows what this really looks like. Well, really no one? We at Access News stand for investigative journalism and have found out what the Access Switch thing really looks like.
There has been a lot going on in the Axis community. One even gets the impression that more is happening again than in recent years. At least as far as online user group meetings and websites are concerned. Here is a small selection. As usual, I start in Europe and with my German-speaking home market. The colleagues in Germany bravely hold on with their mostly monthly access stammtischen or regulars tables. Here's the current list of upcoming dates. Our Spanish colleagues at Access Global Net are also very active. In addition to their many learning contents, they now have a new category on the website where they feature people from the worldwide access scene. Oh no, not him again, although I must say that his introductory video turned out quite nice, though more thanks to the music. The folks at Access User Groups Org continue their important work for the Access community, posting several videos each month with all sorts of talks on Access. For Access developers or interested users, it's a good idea to take an occasional look at their video list on YouTube. Finally, a quick look at the Cowboys and Girls in Denver with their monthly presentations. In the last months, with the usual suspects, Wolf, Step Out, Bell, and oh well. Next up is Richard Rost on July 21. How are things looking for access conferences this year? Again, not abundant, whereby Corona still plays a role, of course not only in terms of direct impact, but also because it interrupts continuities. At least, the Access User Group Spain has resumed its traditional annual meeting in Madrid this June. And there is this strange Alpine guy who tries to keep the continuity of his Access conferences, even if it makes him poorer than a church mouse. Here's another short interview with him about the Virtual Access DEFCON Vienna that took place in April. Mr. Donovan, the good news is you had 135 attendees. The bad news is that was less than last year. How do you explain that? Hmm. Maybe the few new features in Access, the late April date, the weather, Access developers retire or die. Oh well, don't you have any positive questions you report to you? Sure, let's try these. How did the conference go? And how were the ratings? Everything went well, almost. Some people had problems with Microsoft Teams as usual, one speaker's internet connection was unusable and we had to reshoot his presentation. But the content and the ratings were good, even slightly better than last year. Your next conference is the AEK in Germany. How does it look there with Corona? The conference will be hybrid anyway. Depending on the situation, there will be more online or offline participants. We are ready to fight. Woo! Now we come to the interview with Philipp Stiefel. Phil has dared to create a detailed video course about VBA. That's what we talked about. And briefly also about a new small tool that he offers. Some of you may already know his tool website because he offers the only up-to-date and professional universal search and replace tool for access. First, we want to talk about your VBA course. It's new. It came out in April or so. Am I right? April 22? Yes, exactly. It came out in, in April and yeah, it's a brand new VBA course, which I recorded and, and designed. And it's basically all just created by me to provide a um, vehicle to teach VBA in the way that I think it should be taught. And it's quite comprehensive, isn't it? About 16 hours of video material. Yes, yes, it's actually 16 hours of video and it's not just video, there are also some PDF documents, um, some quizzes, there is a sample application that comes with the course and I try to use all this material to, to kind of uh, draw a red line through the course, really from a beginner's point of, uh, of knowledge to a fairly advanced, almost professional, well, not almost professional, it's basically a professional level. If you really, really internalize the stuff that I teach in the course, I think you are a real professional 
access developer from the knowledge point of view, of course, you still need a lot of experience to really incorporate that in your daily work. But the, the foundation of the knowledge is all in that course. Can you show us a bit what it looks like? Here we are. This is basically the course curriculum as the users will see it, at the, the students in the course will see it. And it has lots and lots of lectures. And if you click on uh, any of these lectures, you, you will see basically that the first is um, a video usually explaining the theory, which is based on an usually a PowerPoint um, presentation where I show the theory, what you need to know. That, that is a bit of a dry theory um, lesson, but, but it has to be there to just tell the fundamentals because you can't cover all of them in a practice lesson. So, and the, the slides are available for download and you, you can then skip uh, over to the next lesson, which is a, a practice lesson. You see that here on the screen. Then there is some work on the sample application where I work in practice on really concrete uh, topics to, to show you. And finally, there's usually a homework assignment where I, as I mentioned previously, there, there are some exercises you are supposed to do. And there's then also the homework review where I talk through that. And with with not all lessons, but some lessons also have an, an quiz, basically. These are the types of questions and it's a multiple choice quiz, so you can select one or more correct answers. And that is basically how, how the whole course works. You can also um, start like in the middle if you are so advanced that you think you don't need to to start with variable declarations and a bit and you skip the first two or three lectures and then go ahead with um with the course you can also do that we saw north wind here so your sample application is access but you're not really access centered in the course are you Yes, that is indeed the case. I used the Northwind database and I, I adopted it basically. I changed quite a bit to make it suitable for my sample scenario that I wanted to show. I, I really focus on the VBA side of things. I do not explain much about access at all. And like 95% of the stuff I teach in the course is also applicable to Excel, to Word, to Outlook, of course, to the VBA inside Outlook, Word and Excel. I, I don't tell you anything about the host applications themselves. OK, I think that was a good first impression about your VBA course. So, Phil, now let's come to your uh, command bar editor. Microsoft has not offered an editor, especially for context menus, since the introduction of the ribbons in 2007. But there is, for example, the free editor from Dale Phi. There are many code examples, etc., in the on the internet. What does your tool offer more than the others, and why should you one pay the thirty euros for it? Yes, um, the the code examples on the internet that are um, well, it's it's basically easy to control command bars with code, but. It's three minutes of work you need to do to create the, the actual functionality you need. And it's 30 minutes to look up all the information and to research how exactly it works. And the difference to Dale's free command bar editor is that our uh, command bar editor is much better in visualizing um, hierarchical command bars. So here's a, a sample form and I want to use a context menu in this form. And first I go to the Access DevTools ribbon here and there's a button for our command bar explorer. I click that and I go to uh, pop-ups. You can also work on menu bars if you have an Access MDB file still, but I think most people will now work in uh, ACCDBs where it's only relevant for the pop-up menus, the shortcut menus in forms. 
So there are already a couple of um, pop-up menus defined in that database and you see this, this one down here uh, has many uh, sub-context menus um, and, and you see the tree view is very suitable to display this hierarchy. But um, let's focus on this very simple command by here and I add a new control to that and that's just a new button at the end of the list and I call this button uh, access news demo. That is a new button. And here are all the properties of the button. You have drop downs where you can select all the options, the, the styles, uh, the, the state of the button, all that is visually presented here and can be edited. And one feature is our selector for the on action method. And I created a super simple example here. These are all the uh, all the procedures inside this database and I can just select any of these. You see this is the procedure declaration. I select this procedure and I close this. Now here's a sample form. I go over to the properties and select the, the test pop-up command bar which I just edited with that new control and I switch over to the new form view. <laughs> not really working as a form but you see this is the context menu here and it has the access news demo button and if I click on that the command bar procedure the on action procedure is invoked and this just shows the message box here for you the access news audience. So all the best for your VBA course and for the new tool Phil and thanks for the interview. Thank you very much, Carl. Thanks for inviting me here. Bye bye. Bye. This was the third edition of Access News, a bit shorter and a bit late. The reason for this is that I had several weeks off work because of Corona and follow up problems. Maybe you have heard about this plague before. Servus from Vienna. Access rules.